Welcome to the world of stabilized soil bricks. This process of brick making has been around for the past 25 years in East Africa. Made of local soil material, a small ratio of cement, and a little water, these compressed, interlocking bricks can be a strong, cost-effective building material in the majority world. This video was developed to help people who desire to build a home using this process to understand the steps involved and the techniques to consistently produce high quality bricks. first step in this process is getting your soil. The right type of soil for stabilized soil brick production should contain approximately one-third clay and two-thirds sandy soil. This is usually obtained from the subsoil layer. It is then sieved through a six millimeter sieve to remove any of the large particles. An important note is that the topsoil is not to be used for brick production, so make sure that the topsoil is removed before you collect any of the subsoil layer. Larger clumps that don't make it through the sieve can be crushed using your shovel and pushed through the sieve such that all that remains coming through the sieve are the smaller, finer particles. Step 2. Mixing and preparing the soil mix. This step is probably the most critical in the production of stabilized soil bricks. It is very important to have the correct ratio of cement, soil, and water. The cement to soil ratio is dependent on previously carried out tests. In our case, it was determined that a soil to cement ratio of 1 to 10 was required. Buckets are used to maintain volume measurement. Again in our case, it was determined that a wheelbarrow was four buckets and eight wheelbarrows of dirt were needed to one and a half 75 kilogram bags of cement in order to maintain the one to ten ratio. This ratio is then mixed thoroughly by moving the hill of mix completely to a new location three times to ensure complete mixing of the two components. Water is then added in very small amounts so that it will just clump and hold together. Once the mixing is complete, the soil mixture must be tested to ensure it is at the proper consistency. This is done by grabbing a handful of the mixture and squeezing it into a clump. A properly mixed soil with the correct ratio of water will clump together and hold together when juggled in your hand as illustrated. If the soil mixture is too dry, the clump will break apart quickly. In this case, add a bit more water and mix the soil again. If the soil mixture is too moist, water will either strain out or leave your hand wet when squeezed. In this case, more cement and soil must be added to the mixture and mixed again. Note that the outside weather can change your water ratio on a daily basis. 
After a rain, less water will need to be added to the soil mixture to obtain the proper consistency. And after dry weather, more water will need to be added. It is important to test your soil daily to make sure you have the proper mix of water and soil so you can pass the test we've just shown you. Step 3. Making the brick. The press is opened. A pre-cut piece of plastic is placed on the bottom of the press just on top of the piston face. The mold box is then filled flush to the top with the mix and a wood scraper is used to clean off the excess mix. Do not use your hands or other tools to compact the soil. Another sheet of plastic is then placed over the top of the soil and the cover is dropped into place. The handle is then brought to the vertical position and the rollers fitted into their curved position and locked into place. Then, using several pulls of the lever, the lever is pulled all the way until it reaches the mechanical stop. The handle is then passed to the person on the opposite side of the press. The lever latch is then unlocked and the handle is moved from the vertical position so that the cover can be opened. The handle is then brought all the way down as the block is ejected out of the mold. The block is now removed gently by holding along the long sides and taken to a sheltered area for curing. This procedure will now be demonstrated several times so you can get the idea of how these bricks are compressed. One item of note as you're watching this is that this team of three to four men can make over 600 bricks each day. Periodically, the brick making machine requires servicing to protect the machine and also to keep the brick quality at its best. The three common maintenance items are cleaning the mold piston, cleaning or replacing the plastic gaskets used on top and the bottom of the brick, and oiling the machine. The first item is cleaning the mold piston. You will find when the bricks start coming out with clumps missing or even the brick breaking that the piston and mold area are caked with dirt. This is simply removed by using a piece of wood or a wire brush. The second item is gasket care. These gaskets minimize the amount of dirt that cakes on the mold and through continual use become dirty or ripped up. Simple washing and wringing off the excess water will be sufficient to clean them. If you need to replace them, use garbage bags or grocery sacks work great at making new gaskets. The final item is oiling. The machine should be oiled at the beginning of the day and periodically throughout. A good rule of thumb is that you oil the main piston rod in all rollers about every 80 to 100 bricks that you produce.
final important step for stabilized soil brick making is the curing process. This process takes a minimum of 21 days to produce a brick that has the proper strength characteristics to be used for building. Once the brick is made, it is carried to a location where the bricks are laid out in rows and not stacked. They will then be covered using heavy, sunproof plastic or tarps. These bricks must be watered every morning and every evening and then covered back up for a total of seven days. On the eighth day, the plastic is removed and the bricks are turned over. Beginning on the ninth day, you may stack your bricks. Be sure to keep your bricks in lots based on the day of production. It is important to note that the bricks should be protected from rain from the eighth day to the fourteenth day. From the fourteenth day to the twenty-first day, and thereafter, no protection for the bricks is required. As with any cement-based product, the longer you allow the bricks to cure, the stronger the brick will become over time. Finally, how do we know that our bricks are good? There are some simple tests that can be performed without having to spend money on professional test equipment. The first test is just tapping the brick and running a fingernail across it. A good brick will have a slightly hollow ring to it when tapped, and a fingernail will not scratch the side. The drop test is simply performed by dropping the block from a height of one meter onto the hard ground. If the block falls and remains in one piece, only breaking the edges, then the block has passed the test. If it falls to the ground and disintegrates, then something went wrong in the production process. For a three-point bending test, bricks are placed as shown in the picture. Then, a minimum weight of 90 kilograms is placed at the center of the block, and the block should not break. But the brick holds, and that's what's important. 